There's a valley in Spain called Harama. It's a place and I want you to imagine uh, that you're in a meeting here in the Birmingham Midlands Institute as in the summer of 1937, organised by Birmingham Trade Council to support the Republican side in Spain. Okay, so um, I'll switch to roll now, um, but with my accent will remain the same. <laughs> okay, um, my name is um, uh, my name is Ivan Guerrera. I'm the military attaché attached to the Spanish consul uh, here in Birmingham, in Edgbaston. I represent the legal ruler of uh, Spain, Manuel Azana, and the legal government of Spain, currently involved in a death struggle, a life and death struggle, with some rebels. Some rebels who are trying to uh, turn back the clock and undo the reforms that have taken place already in the country to tackle the age-old problem of inequality and poverty in Spain. A group of generals led by this man who was interestingly dismissed, dismissed by the, uh, the Spanish government uh, a couple of years ago, uh, but he is leading a group of rebels um, and has launched war against the Spanish people. And those rebels include fascists, they include monarchists, they include uh, a whole set of fellow travellers who for some reason have decided to interrupt the progress that the legally elected government, the popular front government, which I represent, the progress that they have put in place. And he and his fellow travellers as I say, have committed, uh, have launched a war on the Spanish people and have committed many atrocities in doing so. Um, a, a photograph has been uh, smuggled out of the nationalist area, out of, uh, sorry, um, out of the nationalist area, showing trade union leaders, university uh, staff, teachers, uh, I'm not quite sure who they are, being rounded up by Franco's men and whatever happened to them we don't know but they will have certainly have been killed. Um, the, the picture here from an area which my government still controls, uh, Guernica, uh, which was bombed very recently. Defenceless town bombed by Franco's acolytes to achieve the aim he set out to take over Spain and turn back the clock. The, um, there is supposed to be in place, the League of Nations has set up a non-intervention pact, a non-intervention committee, which is supposed to stop countries interfering in our affairs. But that hasn't worked. Um, we have 80,000 troops from fascist Italy sent by Mussolini to support Franco and his men. 80,000, an invasion of our country by Spain, by the Italians, but the uh, League of Nations, the Non-Intervention Committee, does nothing. You have um, there a submarine, a picture of the submarine. Italian submarines at will sink ships on the Spanish coast, whoever, uh, whoever, whatever role those ships are taking. And there you have a picture of German aircraft. Hitler is blatantly sent aircraft, um, uh, tanks, uh, ships and heavy weapons to Franco, to the nationalists, to support them in his aims as well. Whereas Britain and France do nothing. In fact, they do even worse. They prevent aid coming to the legitimate government of uh, Spain, which I represent. Um, uh, this man, Neville Chamberlain, who is MP, a local MP uh, for Erdington and former Lord Mayor of Birmingham. He has done his best to prevent help coming to the legal government of Spain, to the legitimate go government of Spain. He's turned a blind eye to the blatant abuses of the decision of the League of Nations to prevent 
um, to prevent foreigners interfering in the Spanish Civil War. Um, and I, what is he going to do next? Is he going to allow Hitler to take over an independent country such as Czechoslovakia or Poland? Nobody in their right mind would allow that. Um, so, I ask you, the policy of my government is not to interfere in the governments of other countries, but I'd ask you, if there's an election in 1938, to vote against the national government and to get a government that is more sympathetic to a very just cause. That is the cause of uh, my Republican government, the popular front of uh, government of Spain. Um, as always, the people of Birmingham have responded beautifully. The individual people of Birmingham have voted, uh, have uh, supported us beautifully through trade unions, through organisations, but individual people uh, supporting Spanish uh, child refugees. There's a number of homes for refugees in Birmingham, refugee children in particular and the great tradition that Brummies have, if I use that term, Brummies have to support uh, those who are fleeing difficulty or oppression continues. And if you'd like to make a donation, coming out to roll for the moment, you don't have to give any money. <laughs> if you would like to make a donation, there is a form, a form for you to uh, fill in um, for the child refugees um, that are being caused by Franco's illegal war. There are many other ways you can support us. Many other ways you can support us. Uh, for example, if you go to the co-op, your local co-op, you can get tokens there, you can buy tokens, pay for tokens that will provide milk that will be sent out to, uh, to Spain if they get past the Italian submarines. So, we are now very fortunate at this conference, this time in the summer of 1937, to have Samuel, who is a, a member of the International Brigade, he, a Brummie, he volunteered to serve in Spain, and as you see, he has been wounded in the fight. And I'll pass over the 1937 uh, clicker. Um, here we have with us a photo from the men on the front of the Major Atlee Company, the British men going out to fight in Spain, um, having to have gone through Paris and through France to arrive in Spain. They've become part of the International Brigades, funded and organised by the Soviet Union. We have here some examples of the, my colleagues out on the front. Edward Flanagan, George Wattis and the brothers Gordon and Donald Bennett, all men from Birmingham, all Communist Party members. But in their aims they have been supported with, um, by the USSR as it tries um, to valiantly um, halt fascist ideological expansion in Europe. Um, many of these men will have received equipment such as machine guns, rifles, and even tanks have been sent out by the Soviet Union in order to support their aims and to prevent a fascist victory. Uh, this has also led to them coming into local contact with um, children and uh, displaced refugees and becoming uh, signs of boosting morale and even advertisement and propaganda for the success of Republicans in their crusade against tyranny. Um, it, of these men, uh, a valiant point must be noted to the brothers Gordon and Donald Bennett who worked together out on the front manning a machine gun together fighting as hard as they can to prevent the fascist uh, victory. Uh, as well as this, people from Birmingham have been uh, running ambulances and volunteering to go to Spain in order to help with the uh, severe, severe injuries being caused, uh, fundraising and sending out such ambulances along with first aid, um, the British Red Cross is support. Um, an example we have is another colleague, Dr Colin Bradworth, who um, is also from Birmingham 
and was active in the Spanish, Spanish Medical Aid Committee, uh, ending up as a 1st Battalion uh, doctor and medical officer at Jarma. Uh, now, if I can. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to ch change over the mic. Um, and I represent Manuel Lozano's um, Popular Front government, uh, the Prime Minister Carbello, his Popular Front government, which is a broad church, a broad church including uh, Socialist Party, Communist Party, and also Marxist organisations such as the POUN. And we're very fortunate to have a member of the POUN militia uh, with us uh, today, uh, and that is uh, Carolina who is going to talk to us and from her perspective. Obreros, campesinos, antifascistas, españoles patriotas, frente a la sublevación militar fascista, todos en pie, a defender la república, a defender las libertades populares y las conquistas democráticas del pueblo. A través de las notas del gobierno y del Frente Popular, el pueblo conoce la gravedad del momento actual. En Marruecos y en Canarias luchan los trabajadores unidos a las fuerzas leales a la República contra los militares y fascistas sublevados. Al grito del fascismo no pasará, no pasarán los verduegos del octubre. Los obreros y campesinos de distantes provincias de España se incorporan a la lucha contra los enemigos de la república alzados en armas. Los comunistas, los socialistas y anarquistas, los republicanos democráticos, los soldados y las fuerzas fieles a la república han infligido las primeras derrotas a los fascistas que arrastran por el fango de la traición el honor militar de que tantas veces han arraldado. Todo el país vibra de indignación ante esos desalmados que quieren hundir la España democrática y popular en un infierno de terror y muerte. Pero no pasarán. España entera se dispone al combate. En Madrid, el pueblo está en la calle, apoyando al gobierno y estimulándole con su decisión y espíritu de lucha para que llegue hasta el fin en el aplastamiento de los militares y fascistas supleados. El, el Partido Comunista os llama a la lucha. Os llama especialmente a vosotros, obreros, campesinos, intelectuales, a ocupar un puesto en el combate para aplastar definitivamente a los enemigos de la república y de las libertades populares. ¡Viva el Frente Popular! ¡Viva la unión de todos los antifascistas! ¡Viva la república del pueblo! ¡Los fascistas no pasarán! ¡No pasarán! ¡No pasarán! So, uh, we're going to, as we often do in a conference, uh, finish with a song. Finish with a song. So, uh, here we are. It's the Valley of Jamara, Jarama, um, named after that Battle of Jarama. Uh, we're going to just sing the first two verses, um, but we do want a, uh, a real uh, gutsy rendition, just to show the fascists that we have the best songs. Uh, so, It's a place that we all know so well For twas there that we fought against the fascists And most of our brave comrades fell Come on, if you can't sing, you can't defeat the fascists And the stand for Madrid that they made for they fought like the troops of the people 
I have sparked off the brain again. We pause there and just listen. People ask, was the war worth it? The answer is simple to me. Yes. Because it made the people throughout the world understand what fascism meant. It was a rehearsal point, yes, for the dive bombers of Hitler. But it was the resistance of the Spanish people that allowed the Second World War to be fought and to be won because they motivated people from Norway to China. The peoples of this country today are only here today because of what the Spanish Republican Army showed the world what could be done. Okay, thank you. We come out of roll, okay? And uh, you can ask any questions you wish. Okay. Or make any comments. Um, did, did, was there a, a hope for Basque children in the Birmingham? Was uh, it built? Uh, set up? It was, uh, Birmingham was more of a, um, uh, a, um, uh, a funnel, if that's the right word, a sort of transit. And there was certainly one near Tamworth, near Tamworth. And they were kept, as far as I'm concerned, we were still uh, doing research on it, there was a, a sort of holding camp, for want of a better word, in, um, on Perry Common. And then they went out to, um, to Tamworth and places like that. Because at one time, I think, the, the leader of the council had to say to people, uh, don't go out and visit them because they're getting too many visitors taking food and gifts and things like that. And there were other homes around. And Florence Sparrow, who, and who lived in, uh, well, there's a blue plaque somewhere uh, in Birmingham. I just can't remember where at the moment. Uh, but she was a Quaker and they were very, very active uh, in uh, supporting um, uh, refugee children as well. Okay, any other questions? Is there a record of men from Birmingham that went out to fight in the Spanish? Uh, the, the most cohesive record is from uh, an organisation called the International Brigade Memorial Trust. And um, they have um, the, um, the biographies of all those who served in the International Brigade, most of them in the British Battalion, but not, uh, but not all of them. Um, and, uh, but uh, the International Brigade was set up by the Communists and they followed the Soviet line, which was uh, certainly greatly helped the Republican cause. Um, but anybody who argued um, uh, was, could be sent home. And George Wattis, um, who was a, um, uh, a great hero and actually took over the Abraham Lincoln Company at one time, so he was obviously very capable, criticised the Communist generals and was sent home and classed a as a deserter. But the International Brigade Memorial Trust accept that and they, so they say, don't believe everything about char poor character, dissolute, etc. Um, but of course quite a few other people served and there's about, if you put in Birmingham you get about 25 uh, people come up on there and it's a free website. Uh, but quite a few, like Carolina uh, referred to, uh, George Orwell and his wife served, but they served with the, the POUM militia. Mm -hmm. And then there was the whole medical side, uh, again organised through the Communist Party, uh, but they were, um, some of them were part of the International Brigade, some weren't. So we'll probably never have, that's a long-winded answer, we'll never have a definitive list of all those who served.